What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week six of season five of the GBA. As uh, I go over the team that I'm going to be bringing in my match tomorrow against Fizz, coach of the Atlanta Haluchas. And he's got a really great team. He's got an awesome record this season. And I am excited for this battle, kind of. The reason I'm not is because I have never prepared less for a GBA battle ever and um i i feel super rushed and i don't feel prepared and i know that's my own fault and i know it's it's hard work and everyone's busy and, and all that but i just had a crazy week i worked every day this week and also um in the evenings when i get off work it's been my birthday and star wars came out and one of my friends birthdays and i have a birthday party tomorrow so I just got a lot going on and Fizz has been great with scheduling and none of this in any way is to preclude anything, assume anything. I'm just letting you guys know if you look at any of my sets, hey Geo, why'd you run 252 here when you could have run 248? I just had to do this really quickly guys. Um, thank you so much to um, Tom for genning my Pokemon for me, and thank you so much to uh, Mighty Mamoswine, aka Baby Nick, for helping me um, run through a couple of set ideas in my head and, and talking this through with me. Because I didn't run Calcs this week. Normally I do Calcs, full Calcs. All my Pokemon resolve their Pokemon. I d obviously did not have time to do that this week. That's a huge time investment. Let's go over the Pokemon I'm bringing this week. Um, uh, as you can see, I have them on the side of the screen here. I'm bringing Latias, Hippowdon, Vaporeon, Entei, Pinsir, and Manectric. And the Pokemon he has on his team are Togekiss, Tyranitar, Garchomp, Starmie, Heliolisk, Stoutland, Mega Charizard Y, Dewblade, Leaveny, Weezing, and Chestnut. Um, and I have organized said... Uh, wait, it'll be, it'll be here. So I have organized his team in order of what I think he will bring from most likely to least likely. Um, I'm almost positive he will be bringing the top two. Uh, you might as well say I am positive because he's brought them every single week. Guard Chomp I think he brings because uh, Tank Chomp is a pretty good answer to both Entei and, um, and Mega Pinsir. Not a flawless one and it can get worn down but it's you know it's it has the ability to set up rocks obviously a lot of people see my team they think rocks even though i have a really good defogger and um and great potential for additional hazard control with ditto um i see that he has a starmy and i know that starmy can be kind of a problem looking at my team it's just in general uh <laughs> Water Psychics, man. There was one last week. There's one here. I go up against one next... Not next week, but my next battle. They're all over the place, man. They're good Pokemon. Starmie is great. Great uh, hazard control, so I'm pretty sure he's going to want to bring that too. Um, offensively, it does pretty well against some of my team. Heliolisk is another Pokemon like that. Great move pool. Very fast. Outspeeds uh, my two primary sweeper threats. Uh, Stoutland, because... It's very fast, so it's a good offensive check to my offensive checks um, coming in off the sand from a T-Tar, so it's a good late game sweeper. And then Zard Y, because <sighs> Zard Y can be walled very well by my team, but it does force a lot of switches. It can be very powerful and can pack a lot of answers to Pokemon that would normally do pretty well against a fire type Pokemon in the sun, like... I don't know. <laughs> Vaporeon, who knows. Um, I do believe could be a bring, but Entei really pressures it. Livani just drops to most of my... Anything with even a hint of offense, which is most of my Pokemon, can really do a number to it. And I don't think he's going to be playing games with the Sun against me because of Entei, um, which is another reason why Zard Y is not in the top six. I, there's a chance he'll bring it, and it is kind of a powerful Mon, but at the same time, I really don't think he's going to be bringing Charizard Y because he really doesn't want to give me the Sun for Entei. 
Dewblade, um, of course, being weakened by Entei also. Livani by both my sweepers. Weezing just doesn't... It's it's a defensive Mon without reliable recovery that's two-hit KO by both of my physically offensive Mon, so there's not that. And then Chestnut, because both of my Mon hit it super effective with their stabs. So uh, I, don't, I don't see him as doing that. Um, looking at his team... The only other kind of thing, the only things I see about his team that really stand out to me are that um, Tyranitar is a very good, a very, very good mon against my team because it, its typing is very effective against my two, my two sweepers, and it can trap and really hurt Latias, um, and for that reason I actually think it's going to be Scarfed. Uh, I'm going through a lot of the uh, the team building that he might have in his head, and given that he's going to be bringing Tank Chomp, I think he's going to be bringing Tank Chomp, I, I really think it's going to be a Scarfed Tyranitar, so uh, I'm going to have to be really mobile around that. So let's go over the team I'm bringing. Um, let's start off with Latias here. Latias, I'm bringing a Timid, Max Special Attack, Max Speed, Defog, Roost, Ice Beam, Draco Meteor. Draco Meteor hits everything on his team really hard. The things that it doesn't hit, um, I can hit really well with Ice Beam. The notable exception to that is Dewblade, who I probably wouldn't stay in against anyway. Um, I want... Uh, I wanted Roost to try and keep Latias around as much as possible, and then Defog because I, his team does have the potential to Hazard stack, and I want to be able to manage that. Uh, we have Hippowdon. He's here to handle the numerous physical threats on his team. Conveniently enough, most of them are not... Uh, don't pack powerful enough coverage to, to hit KO Hippowdon. Uh, a choice banded Stoutland in the in the sand really can't do much to Hippowdon. He is walled pretty effectively by it. Same Dewblade can't really do much to Hippowdon. Um, pretty much looking at his team, his best way to handle Hippowdon would be to status it or to hit it with a special attack. And obviously, I'm not staying in against a Starmie and probably not against a Healy list because I don't want to get. If it's in the sun, I don't want to get slammed by a Solar Beam. I don't want to get Grass Knotted. Uh, he can actually learn Surf, so I don't want to get Surfed either. Um, unless it's an offensive Chestnut, again, Hippowdon can kind of handle that too. And so, and then there's Levani here. I really just don't think he's bringing Levani. So I, I think Hippowdon's going to be my primary physical wall for that. I'm bringing Sand Force because I thought about this for a while. I considered bringing Sand to counter the Charizard Y, because if I'm in with Vaporeon against a Charizard Y, I can anticipate that he's going to go for the Solar Beam against me, switch into Hippowdon on that turn, um, turn off the Sun, and turn on the Sand, slowing down, giving him, forcing him to take an additional turn to charge that, and then I can navigate around that and maybe switch into Latias the turn after, or something like that to eat it up, or... Um, just play around it, maybe tank it because it's half power, and then kill him off with a rock slide on that turn. Trapping him in, essentially, uh, forcing him to charge for a turn. But I ended up not doing that because uh, I'm pretty sure Tyranitar is coming, and I'd love to have the Sand Force up to really empower my my Earthquake and Rock Slide. So, uh, yeah, Earthquake, Rock Slide is my offensive coverage. Everything that he has on his team that isn't hit by Earthquake... Um, yeah, he has two flying types. Uh, are hit by Rock Slide. And the Chestnut kind of walls this set, but again, it's not really an issue. Stealth Rock there to get at my own hazards. And that will be that. Next we have Vaporeon. Vaporeon being the main Charizard Y counter, the main Starmie counter. Um, I'm running Calm because I want to be able to fully tank a Solar Beam from a Charizard Y if I need to. I'm running Scald Rain Dance to do the same thing I was talking about earlier with Hippowdon to mess with the weather against Charizard and make it non-beneficial. I could also, uh, 
if I'm at full health, I can survive a banded return and sack it off and get a rain dance off to limit his sweet potential there. Wish Heal Bell, um, just because Zoolander, I want to pass off wishes to other Pokemon and pass off Heal Bells to other Pokemon. Zoolander, very kind of hit and runny, um, pop off Scald, try and get some burns, mess with the weather, give a wish to someone else. He's not really wishing for himself. If I really wanted to wall with Zoolander, I'd put Protect on there. That's not what I'm trying to do. So, uh, it's to net safe switches into offensive threats to net me offensive momentum. I could put Baton Pass on there, but I think Heal Bell is more important. I need an attack move, so I have Scald and Rain Dance is part of the set here to really play around this. I'm questioning now looking at it, but I don't have time to change it. Whether or not I want to run a little defense investment in bold to better tank, um... Psy Shock from Starmie, but I don't think it's gonna, it's not gonna be that big of an issue. I calced it just a minute ago, and I, I see that it's not a two-hit KO, so I should be okay there. Um, the issue here, this set is designed also to take as little as possible from Heliolisk. Um, Heliolisk obviously is a bit of an issue to my team, so I'm gonna have to play around that. Part of the way I'm choosing to do that, I'll scoop down onto this boy, is Omar. Omar the Manectric is going to be coming uh, with the Lightning Rod that allows me safe switch-ins to the electric attacks from Heliolisk. Heliolisk um, doesn't really have stuff that's going to be super devastating to a Manectric. I can I'm Choice Scarf on this guy. Choice Scarf Modest to maximize the damage output I can do um, while retaining... Uh, speed advantage against a majority of his team. There's no way Starmie is running Scarfed, and he's the one thing that I'm hoping to outspeed with this. Running T-Bolt for uh, stab damage, Volt Switch for stab momentum building, Overheat for coverage uh, that does really well against some of his, uh, his resists here. I could have run HP Ice. Instead, I'm opting to run Switcheroo. Here's why. HP Ice is a two-hit KO against Garchomp. And I don't want to risk the getting O code in return. If I'm in a situation where I predict a switch and I've handled some of his faster threats, I'm not worried about them anymore. Or if Starmie is, say, in um, if Starmie's in quick attack or extreme speed range, then I will switcheroo something that could be potentially crippled by uh, losing its its useful item. So, so there's Omar. An addition. Oops, sorry. Dropping stuff. Uh, an additional check to Heliolisk, a good offensive momentum builder that's going to be helpful for me against a lot of the rest of his team. We have, as my last two mon, Entei with a relatively standard set. Choice, Band, Adamant, Max Attack, Max Speed, with Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, and Iron Head. This guy puts in a lot of work against his team. He doesn't really have things that want to switch in against me. A Sacred Fire is a two-hit KO against Starmie, unless it's got some defense investment. He's really not going to want to get burned on his tire on his T tar unless it's special. If it's special, it's walled by Vaporeon. Um, Sacred Fire really just does a number of against everything, especially if he brings Zardwine, sets the sun up. It hammers his physically defensive threats outside, or yeah, physically defensive Mon. Again, Garchomp's not going to want to get burned, so um, decisions can really push the button by abusing the Sacred Fire. Um, I just have to make sure that I'm not allowing myself to get whittled by any of his faster mon that way. And then we have Pinsir, who's running a Jolly Max Speed Return Close Combat Quick Attack Knockoff set. Uh, the reason for this is Pinsir, in the way I've seen him in his role in this match, is not going to be set up and sweep for the win. It's going to be... Um, chip away. This is going to be a much more chippy team than normal. Oh, I don't like this guy's team. Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be a, a very chip away kind of, kind of um, Pokemon for me. He has a lot of power, enough power that I don't need the Swords Dance to net a lot of important kills. Uh, I am outsped by a few of his offensive threats, namely Starmie, Heliolisk, and... Um, in the Sand, Sand Rush, Stoutland, and in the Sun, Chlorophyll, Leaveny. So, there's also a lot of potential for Scarfs on some of his Mon. Uh, Tyranitar, for example, who will outspeed and resist my, um, my priority. So, I don't really want to 
Oh, I didn't really want to play around that. So instead, I just went... Yeah, I went Cuddles with this set. Knock off to hit the Dew Blade. Uh, close Combat to hit the T-Tar. Anything that I was considering Earthquake. The only things I would use Earthquake on are T-Tar, who is hit harder by Close Combat. Heliolisk, who's hit harder by Close Combat because it's part normal. And the... Do blade, but knockoff will do just fine against him there. And then return is my primary stab. I was considering running double edge this week for, for lols because I didn't know that I was going to have time to get happiness up, but luckily I just set it up. Oh, I'm going to set it up to get max happiness in just a second. So, okay, this is going to be my team, guys. I hope you like it. And uh, do tune in tomorrow for the game against Nip, or not Nips, Nips, Fizz. <laughs> Fizz Walt Star Dustington Jr. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm tired. It's been a long week. Please do uh, stop by tomorrow and check out my game. As always, my name's Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.